Hello friends, welcome to Rocks for Brains. My name is Lauren and today I wanted to go on a little hike. Um, I had a few days off of work and it was raining and snowing for a couple of those days so I'm taking advantage of the sunshine <laughs> and the lack of wind and rain. You know, we do need the moisture out here so I'm not complaining but it's not very fun to be outside in that. So um, I'm going to go on a little hike today and try to relocate a spot that I found just haphazardly about a year and a half ago um, where there's a, a very colorful vein of chert inside the limestone. Yeah, it's sunny out, kind of. The clouds keep going back and forth, so sometimes it's sunny. Um, but it's still about 35 degrees, so that's why I'm all bundled up still. Um, put my gloves back on and put my earmuffs back on and hopefully get warmed up walking around. So today I'm out in Coconino National Forest, uh, but I am just on the boundary of National Park Service land. And so my plan is to follow this fence line behind me and stay within Coconino National Forest and try to follow the limestone and see if we can locate that colorful piece of chert. Um, the vein that was going through the limestone. Because the last time I was here and I found it, I wasn't planning on picking up any rocks, but I did. And I actually tumbled a few of them and they came out really well. So if I can collect more um, that are smaller pieces, pieces that are small enough to go in the tumbler, um, but are really colorful, then I'll be happy. Wow, that's a beautiful view. Looks like it might be snowing on the peaks. Right up there. Those are the San Francisco peaks. It's a big stratovolcano. The one on the left though is O'Leary. That's a shield volcano. There's lots of volcanoes out here. Over 600 actually in the San Francisco volcanic field. So all this black that we're standing on and walking around and all of that is volcanic, volcanic cinders. These little basalt lines are really neat. It's almost like a little squeeze up right in the middle here. And there is a big volcano right there. But the rest of the landscape is just cinders. And then all of a sudden, there's this little collection of boulders. So it's like a little squeeze of lava came up. And then you've got these red basalt boulders right here. You'll probably see more of those later. I'm really trying to stay warm right now. It's not that bad. Just putting the, the muff on my face every once in a while helps. Um, and keeping moving helps, of course. So I'll keep going along the path here, which is just a wash. It's a big wash. So glad to be outside. It's cold but I'm happy. I was starting to see more and more pottery sherds. And I thought, well, there's got to be a structural site somewhere here. And sure enough, it's a little ancestral Puebloan structure. Looks just like a pile of rocks maybe, but those used to be walls in someone's home about eight to nine hundred years ago. There's a little black and white piece of pottery, a little sherd. And there is a difference between a sherd and a shard. So a sherd, S-H-E-R-D, is specific to pieces of ceramic and pottery. Whereas a shard, S-H-A-R-D, can be a number of different broken things. It is illegal to collect any kind of cultural artifacts 
on national forests and any public lands. To be honest though, even if it was private lands, I wouldn't collect it. Not because I'm superstitious at all, but out of respect. It's another piece of pottery. This one is called corrugated. So it has these little coil lines. And often you can see little impressions from someone's thumb, the person who made this. This is more of a utility ware for cooking and storage. It's not really painted at all. It has a little slip on the outside, or sorry, the inside. You do see a lot of these out here. This is shirt, but it's not the kind of shirt that I'm looking for. I can tell what it came from. It actually was a cobble from the Little Colorado. Um, and this was probably broken in ancestral Puebloan times. So that's likely an artifact. I'm not gonna take it. I'm gonna leave it right where it is. Oh, nope, it's right there. This is more like what I'm looking for. So it's this kind of orange, peachy colored chert that I know is associated with the limestone around it. It has some still on the outside. Um, and it doesn't have that rounded cobbled stone looking exterior. So even though that's not the little vein that I was looking for, it's a little good piece. So I'm going to take that and we'll keep going. Well, I know I'm not in the same spot that I was last time, but this little hillside has quite a bit of the broken limestone and churn pieces. I just have to be careful because it does look like there's also some pottery here. I don't want to make sure I'm not accidentally taking any artifacts. So I'm going to keep close attention to how the rocks are broken and make sure that they don't look like they were broken on purpose because then it might be an artifact. So how do I know if the rock that I'm looking at is broken naturally or broken on purpose? You know, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell, but a lot of these rocks that have high silica content or silicon dioxide, when they're broken with impact, they have conchoidal fractures. So think of a rock hitting your windshield and it has those circular fracture patterns. You do often see that in rocks that were worked by humans. So this one is questionable. It does have maybe some of those fracture lines. So I'm gonna leave it here because it's Kind of questionable and I don't want to risk it. Well, we're getting closer. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. It has some really good patterns and different shades of orange and peach. There's another little one right here. That has almost purple in it right there. So those two are coming home. Whoa, do you guys see that? Look at the banding on this thing. That's incredible. That might be the find of the day. Nice. All right, we found some bigger chunks of the orange shirt and very sparkly bits in that one does have a lot of this sandy material though so these ones might not tumble very well some very interesting colors it's almost like a maroon color in there 
not quite what I'm looking for. I'm gonna leave them there. Here's a big piece. Let's see if I can pull this out. Oh, might have to get the rock hammer out of here to pull it on. All right, now it's coming loose. Whew. There we go. Not quite as impressive as I thought it was gonna be. There's some of those orange lines in there, but still, even though it's very sparkly, wow, look at that. I don't know. Do I want it? Or am I gonna leave it? I think I'm gonna leave it. Leave it here for someone else to see and enjoy another time. It got a little windy all of a sudden, so sorry if the wind noise is too bad. But I wanted to show you the limestone here close up. And this is part of the Kaibab formation, so it's Kaibab limestone. It's about 260 million years old formed when there was a shallow seabed. And you do often see little shell impressions in these rocks. I have seen both nautiloid and gastropod, different snails and other bivalve fossils within these rocks. Now a national forest, or at least this national forest, it is okay to collect invertebrate fossils in small amounts, so fossils of animals that don't have spines. Um, but probably not going to do that today, unless we find something really, really good. All right, this looks very familiar. I think we might have found our spot. Oh yeah. Look at all that. It's unlikely that someone else was here in the time frame since I was last here, but it's possible. But this does look very familiar. So I'm gonna get the rock hammer out, do a little digging, and see what else comes out of here. So I'm not really digging all that much, I'm just kind of moving the rocks around. And I did break a few as well, so I could see how dense of a crystalline formation they were, how strong they were, because that'll give me an indication of how well they might tumble. And also, some of these pieces have more of a kind of maroon color, which was really interesting. There's a couple pieces that I'll take home. It's got some really interesting patterns in there. This one might actually be really good to cut and polish. Gotta get that flat lap machine though. Saving up. Super sparkly. I hope the sparkles on that are showing up. Cause that is awesome. Well, there's a nice little gastropod fossil. See the spiral? So it's probably just the impression from inside the shell. And the shell has eroded away already. A little sea snail. 260 million years ago. This limestone, when it weathers, is so sharp. I have to be really careful when hiking around here this will tear your skin and it will tear your pants <laughs> very quickly. Very, very, very sharp rocks. Some interesting little crystal bumps in these rocks. I think this is some kind of calcite nodule. It's like a little piece of crystal cauliflower stuck in this rock here. I like it. Just noticed this little rodent jaw here. And then realized, yep, there's a rat nest right in that little hole. 
with a rat or rabbit. I know some people that will tell me what this is. Looks like there's some clouds headed this way. No! That's eh, okay. The rain's again. We need it. A little pocket of nice, I think, calcite crystals. There's actually quite a few of these little holes in this limestone here. Filled up with little crystals inside. Okay, I've been following this little bench of limestone kind of up and down this hill for a little while now. And I haven't really seen any more of the orange chert, but I'm gonna cross to the other side of the wash and go up the hill there. So I think there's another little limestone shelf on the other side that we'll go take a look at. Okay, this little rock down here caught my eye. It's really weird though. It almost looks like it's a shape of a long tooth. It's definitely made of rock. It's not a ceramic. Is it a fossil? Maybe it just eroded that way? <laughs> That's so weird. Huh. All right. Well, it's a mystery. All right, I've come into a spot with a little bit more of the orange colors in there. That one probably would look really good in the tumbler. And some other little pieces of, I think, calcite concretions of some kind. That one's super sparkly. That's so cool. That one will probably just disintegrate in the tumbler, but... Very interesting. I'm not gonna take this one, but it was too cool not to show you. That orange is just so bright sparkles and it has some patterns but the orange is very very thin so it's just on the surface here we're gonna leave it be yep I'm going up this hill this hike is my workout for the day let's do it Sorry for the wind noise, guys, but I had to show you this. This is a piece of obsidian that has been worked. I don't know how old this is, but you can see it has those conchoidal fractures and chip marks around the edges. That's awesome. And it's going to stay right there. a little ominous. I think there's some snow coming our way. It's definitely getting windier. Alright guys, I could spend all day out here, honestly, but it is starting to get a little windy. And I do have to work tomorrow. I've got a few tours left at home, so I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for coming along with me on this little hike. I hope you enjoyed looking for the colorful chert and seeing all the different kinds of rocks that are in the area. Hope you will come with me on the next adventure. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Until next time, try to learn something new every day. Bye!